Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.1 beta 2. This is available to developers and iOS 17.1 public beta 2 should be out either by the time you're watching this video or later tomorrow. Now this particular update came in at 865.3 megabytes. That's on my iPhone 15 pro and the pro max devices and iPad as well. And along with this, Apple also released iPad OS 17.1 beta 2 watch OS 10.1 beta 2 that I'm installing right now along with Mac OS updates, TV OS, HomePod, Vision OS beta 4, and even Mac OS Monterey and Ventura updates for developers as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 21B5056E. As we get closer to a final release, the E will get closer to the letter A, and then we'll have a final release to the public. So we'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later. Now, as far as everything new, well, there is a new modem update in this update. So we went from 1.11.00 with beta one to 1.12.00 with beta two. That's on the 15 pro and 15 pro max models. If you have a different model of 14 or older phone, the modem number could vary, but you should have some sort of update if Apple felt it was necessary. Now, as far as new features, let's go back into settings. And then if we go down to standby, there's some changes here. Under display, Apple has given us some new options. So now we have automatically where it will turn the display off after 20 seconds or never. So if you want to use this on a stand, just place it on a stand and standby will never turn off. Now that's on the always on display phones that I've seen so far. If we go into the iPhone 11, go to the same thing, go down to standby you'll see that we don't have the same options here, even though this is on beta two. So it seems to be only the always on display phones. I did verify it on the previous phone as well with 14 pro max. So it is there just not on older phones without the always on display. Now we also have an update with the ringtones and under sound and haptics. If we tap on ringtone or text tone, let's go into that. Not only did they bring back all of the new ringtones and text tones, but you can now use your custom ringtones where it was a bug before in iOS 17, where you had some issues with that. So that should have returned. And also the volume seems to be fixed. So if we play a couple ringtones here, play daybreak dollop, If we go back, the text tones also seem to be a little bit louder. Now they might need to be turned up a little bit. Some of them are still a bit quiet, but in general, they seem to be a little bit better, but I'm glad they've brought those back because I really like some of the new ones. All of the originals can be found under classic. Now the battery icon has been updated slightly as well. Now this could be a bit of a bug as it doesn't seem to actually appear correctly when you zoom in. So if we take a look here in the upper right, if we zoom way in, you'll see that it's more squared off on the battery icon itself. This is a little odd, doesn't look correct, even though it looks more like a real battery. I don't know if it was on purpose or if it will be changed in the future, but it is something quite a few people seem to notice. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is there's still no journal app. If we go into Safari on the iOS 17 website, it still says coming later this year. That could be with iOS 17.1 or maybe 17.2, 17.3. We don't know 100% yet, but maybe they'll add it in beta 3. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention is if we're in an app or anywhere on the display and we want to go into reachability, we can do that, of course, just like we always could, but the background is now black. It no longer has the wallpaper representative in the background. So that's a slight change that they brought. Just swipe down from the middle there and you'll go right into that. But again, the background is gone. That was gone in beta one as well. Now, one thing I did want to share is now that watch OS 10.1 beta one is installed. We now have the option for double tap on the series nine and ultra two. So let me put in my passcode. And if we go back over to the iPhone, we'll go into the Apple watch. Then we'll scroll down to gestures and you'll see we now have the option for double tap. It's turned on. We can use it for playback, pause and play and pause, or we can switch it to skip. We also have the option for smart stack, advance or select. So if we go into the smart stack, double tap, it instantly recognizes it goes into the smart stack as I double tap my fingers. So as you can see that we'll double tap again and it advances it. So if we go back home and maybe we're in music, so we'll go over to music here. If we're in music, double tap, it will start playing if we're in a song. So I think we'll have to be in a song here. Give it just a moment. We'll play it on the iPhone. And if I double tap, 
it actually pauses this. You'll see it there with the play icon. Again, double tap and it resumes. So it works really well and very fast, actually much better than the accessibility version did quite some time ago. Now, as far as anything else new, well, there doesn't seem to be anything else yet. There is changes to wording throughout. Unfortunately, they have not brought the battery update that we have with the iPhone 15 yet on older phones. So if we go into battery, we go to battery health and charging and then charging optimization. For some reason, they haven't brought the battery limit here with 80%. It makes no sense, but they just haven't updated it yet. They also haven't brought the charge cycles and I checked on my 14 pro max and the charge cycles are here on the 15 pro, but not on the 14 pro max. For some reason, they really need to bring that feature. Now, if we take a look at the release notes, we'll go into the feedback app. You'll see if we go into iOS 17.1 beta two, this is actually public facing. I'll link it in the description if you want to take a look, but you'll see it says resolved issues. There's actually three. Now the first two with widgets and the SK ad network was there before, but store kit is actually new where they fixed an issue with the completion block in load product. So if you're programming this with store kit, it should have resolved that. However, there are still 10 known issues with Apple wallet and Apple pay. So some issues there for sure that of course they'll work out with the next betas or maybe one after that. One thing they haven't worked out though, is the notification bug. It's still there. And that was really slow. When I swiped down that time, there was some stutter there, definitely an issue. And also if we swipe and bring the screen down. It actually looks like they fixed this issue where it was quite slow before they fixed that frame rate with this beta. So that's something they've fixed, but I haven't seen any other bugs that have been fixed just yet. Possibly they fixed some issues with Apple CarPlay using USB C, but again, we'll have to see over the next few days if that's actually resolved. But as far as additional bug fixes, they haven't really said anything so far. And that leads me to if they fix the iPhone 15 overheat issue, I did notice right when I started the phone up after installing the update, it got warm like normal, but it's so far fairly cool. So I don't know that we're going to have that fix in this update, or if that's going to be released separately with maybe a different update, but so far it seems to be staying nice and cool. That's true on all my devices with the current beta, whether that's the iPhone 11, my iPhone 14 pro max, and of course the iPhone 15 phones, they seem to be doing much better that way. I don't know as I never really had the overheat issue myself, but as soon as it heated up, completed things in the background, it was fine. And overall performance seems to be pretty good. Whether that's the iPhone 11, other than the stuttering I showed you before general things with scrolling are nice and smooth opening different apps. If we go into podcasts, go back here, go into podcasts, you'll see, well, on the other one, I had a splash screen there, but if we go in and just scroll up and down things in general seem to be pretty smooth as far as initial impressions. However, it could change over the next few days. And we'll measure that and talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. As far as the battery life, well, I've been using the 15 pro full time on beta one. I used the 15 pro max for a week. Now I'm using the 15 pro, but battery life in general has been okay. Hopefully it fixes the issue I'm having. If we go into battery, then we go to battery health and charging. You'll see I'm at hundred percent battery capacity. I only have four cycles on this phone, but you'll see I've been using it over the past four days. And today I have three hours and two minutes of screen active time, five hours and two minutes of screen idle time. And I've used a little over 50% of my battery. So, or actually according to this, this is what I keep seeing is inconsistencies. I've used about 42%. So this is showing over 50. There's some inconsistencies here and Safari, it keeps saying is using a lot of power, but if you show the activity, it actually says two minutes. So I'm not really sure why it keeps showing this. I think there's something wrong with this battery screen. I keep seeing this and I've seen this from other people as well. Let me know if you're seeing this, but we'll take a look at battery life over the next few days and then talk about it on the weekend with more features, the follow-up and more. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.1 beta two, if you don't want any bugs, but maybe you want to try out the new standby feature, it may be worth trying. However, just make sure you have a backup and that you can go back using a computer or you don't really mind having those bugs. Otherwise I would probably wait until beta three to try it out with the public beta. Typically those are going to be more stable around beta three, beta four, or a final release. And speaking of a final release, I would expect, I guess, weekly betas at this point with iOS 17.1 beta three, probably next Tuesday. However, later this week we could have iOS 
0.3. That could fix the overheat issues if Apple decides to push that sometime this week, Wednesday or Thursday. However, they may wait until iOS 17.1, but they did say they're going to fix that issue, so I would expect it sooner than iOS 17.1, as I expect iOS 17.1 either by the end of this month or early November. But based on the regular betas and what they did last year, probably later this month, maybe the week of the 22nd or the week of the 29th. Sometime around that time frame is what I would expect. Now, as far as overall benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at those. I ran those on this device and ran them before on this device with beta one. So you'll see, I scored 2,894 for single core, 6,951 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history, it's a little bit higher. And I ran this right after installing the update when it got a little bit warm and was processing in the background. So, so far it's even better than it was before. Apple did say that the battery fix will not affect performance or throttle the CPU. So it looks looks like if this has that fix in it, it definitely didn't do that. And it's performing very well. It's not as fast as it was on iOS 17 when I had 7,220 with 17.0.2. But again, I just ran this right after installing the update. So we'll have to give it a few days and see what it's like. Now, if you found anything else in iOS 17.1 beta two, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.